Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm taking a look at the episode Robot uh, which yeah first of all I just want to say um, you know how sad and unfortunate it is of the news that you know um, Terence Dix passed away of this recording on the Monday uh, of the Monday just gone and yeah just I'm just uh, wishing his family and friends the best uh, sort of thing um, during this time and you know just want to say that he's a inspiration to uh, a lot of people uh, and that who you know watch and or read the target novelizations and whatnot and yeah uh he'll be missed and and that and yeah this is of course one of the stories that he wrote uh starring tom baker with elizabeth sladen and uh yeah tom baker's first story uh you've got the k1 robot there you've got the tom baker years uh 1974 through to 81 you got tom baker there you got tom there as well you Doctor Who, BBC, DVDs, Robot. Likewise on the spine, you know, you got the two entertainment thing, BBC, Robot, uh, Tom Baker logo, and, or Tom Baker even, and then the Doctor Who logo. And on the back you've got your uh, information of uh, stuff with the special features, the bio on the episode, as well as all the strip of different images. And on the inside you've got the DVD, as well as the writer's notes and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it was produced by Barry Letts, uh, directed by Christopher Barry, and uh, and written by Terence Dix. Uh, so yeah, um, an episode I've always really liked. Uh, obviously, it sets off the beginning era of my favourite Doctor. It's um, you know, it's it's just really sort of impactful, I think. And I know some people have criticised it for having sort of a... Um, to, hearkening a bit too much on the past of, of like, the John Pertwee years. But to be fair, I think it works really well because if, uh, if Tom was to be more of a sort of... Uh, sort of uh, shyer, more sort of... Uh, yeah, for lack of a better term, Shire, that's the only other way I can put it, sort of less bombastic, uh, larger-than-life character, that then, you know, like, say, Pete Davison or some of the other Doctors, then you'd still have, you know, the familiarity of the setting isn't a limitation, if anything, it's a strength to this story, I think, um, in so much as it allows whoever the actor is, uh, they would have got for the part to really sort of pop... Regardless of, uh, as I say, if, if they were someone who was, as I say, a contrast to Tom Baker. Fortunately, Tom Baker was just a larger-than-life, uh, you know, entity and, and, and an icon, or would be later become an icon anyway, uh, with the Doctor. And it's difficult to believe, uh, as said in the writer's notes, you know, that there was ever a time that he was not synonymous with Doctor Who. So, yeah, um... You know, he's he's quirky, he's weird, he's, you know, he's alien, he's, you know, just eccentric and and, and, and has this childlike wonder and and, 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 and that. And, but he still has some scenes of authoritative nature, you know, to Kettlewell and, and some of the other characters, you know, uh, and that. So, uh, which would later be maybe evolved upon or, or seen more in other stories, but it's it's still there. Um, the design of the K1 robot is phenomenal, really. Uh, you know, on the on the budget, uh, it's a really good design. It looks and moves fairly well. Uh, I mean, there is that one scene where he kind of has a bit of a wobble. The actor in the in in inside of the the thing, um, and that, and yeah, just really bugging me the glare on that. But yeah, um. Yeah, and, and I, I, I like the scene with the sort of costume changes and that. Some people might not. But I like that it, you know, it, it teeters on the line of being a bit too pantomime, maybe. 
but it, it still works and I like how they have like the Doctor Who theme underscored when he finally does get his proper costume and that I love the whole scene of like you know the physiognomy it's a bit different and all that you know <laughs> well the nose is a definite improvement you know um, because you know he's, Tom didn't really get on with John Pertwee and bit of a jab there. <laughs> Elizabeth Sladen's really good in this story um, and that I, I have noticed though in this rewatch of the umpteenth time, billionth time of rewatching this episode, um, it is a bit odd that Harry Sullivan and Sarah Jane Smith are the two main companions of the fourth Doctor at least for that first season and yet in this episode they are not really seen together all three of them you know or as I say just like Harry and then the Doctor, or Harry, or, or Sarah and the Doctor, you know. They, they have altercations, of, or uh, interactions even, but um, not often, uh, and that, which is a bit odd. Or, it, they're sprinkled out. I'd say the main two people who have the most, sort of, time spent together, probably the Doctor and the Brigadier, which is interesting, because then, obviously, later on, Brigadier and Unit and all that kind of get phased out, but um, but yeah, I, I really like the fact that units in this story, I, their inclusion's really good, they have a lot to do, and, you know, shoot the big robot quite a bit, um, and I like the fact that, as I say, that's sort of used as a springboard to, you know, sort of, say, one last hurrah to, you know, what would have been a lot of people's favourite era uh, growing up, pre the, the Tom Baker era, you know. Uh, and that, and it allows some familiar faces like Sarah and the Brigadier, as I say, to come to terms with this new Doctor, as well as the audience, and the audience have a famil familiar faces because the main characters change, so I think it's an ingenious part on, their p on the people behind the scenes to have, pardon me, um, familiar people. I oddly really like the music in this, um, and that, and I don't know, on the back of the DVD, uh, case it doesn't say who did the music which is a shame but because again for once I'm gonna mention it and I really like it it's um you know it, incidental funny and it just adds to the scenes really and it's uh, not too over the top or unbearable for my ears personally which is a, a nice change of pace um Professor Kettlewell the actor who plays him is really sort of you know well-rounded and or, or just really cool sort of mad scientist and that and uh you know there are some stuff that happens with his character that's pretty cool and interesting and that um i think the story overall the story sort of falters towards the end it the more it goes on the less effective and less good it gets i guess it tapers off towards the end towards the latter end and yeah it's it is a bit annoying because, as I say, the first sort of two or three parts are really strong. It's part four that really sort of, as I say, sort of falls a little bit. Um, and that is, is probably the weakest of the four parts, but... And that Sergeant Benton's in this story as well. Another character from the sort of unit family as well. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting having this female... Uh, baddie and or bad guy, uh, bad character and that, uh, spoiler alert I guess, but you know, and the scientific reform society and and that, and yeah, it is very much like an older sort of unit story, but with Tom Baker's sort of larger than life personality, like really sort of, uh, as I say, in th uh, bringing it to life, like, uh, uh, like, you know, a, a lot, you know, not to say that all of the sort of John Petui era sort of unit stuff was boring by any means, but I'm not saying that, I'm just saying, like, I think this sort of reinvigorates that sort of era whilst also saying goodbye to it, uh, and then, yeah, as I say, moving forward, or at least for the uh, foreseeable future, or short future even, because eventually they would go back to unit eventually, uh, but yeah... Um, what else? Uh, there's there's obviously a lot of humour in this story, all sprinkled out and that, and I love how the scarf is used, and, you know, you get the sonic, you get the scarf being used in funny and interesting ways, and, and that to trip up that guard, to pick up that uh, magnet and that, 
Uh, you know, just a, a lot of funny scenes, and I think most of them work. And that, um, you know, Doctor Who and humour is very uh, tricky, but in this one, I think a lot of the humour works uh, incredibly well. I like the whole sort of King Kong thing, I guess, towards the latter end. It's just the effects or special effects are a bit iffy. Uh, the scene with the tank and, as I say, the K1 robot getting huge. But I mean, they're working with the constraints they have to deal with than that. So, um, just like Doctor Who now, I guess. So I can't, I can't really sort of fault it too much. Overall, I'd give Robot a nine out of ten. I think it's a really strong story. I think it's such a a good sort of well-rounded sort of first story for any Doctor, really. I mean, you know, um, and I think with the likes of, say, maybe Deep Breath, they try to do a very similar thing in the new series, where I think that's why they had uh, Jenny, Vastra and Strax to sort of, you know, sort of ease people into the Capaldi era and that. And, yeah, so it, so it clearly worked well enough in the old show with this story uh, to do it again. And, yeah, I'm not I'm not that surprised, really, and, and that, that you would sort of do that again. And there are a lot of themes about science and and that and technology and and stuff uh and and the sort of you know the sort of political stuff that's you know sort of happening now which is quite interesting and and, and mad to think you know of something that hap uh, was written you know 40 something odd years ago uh but yeah i i'd give robot a nine out of ten it's easily one of the best uh starts to a doctor zero i think uh in my personal opinion. So yeah, 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.